Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the Cardiff International Arena. Matchroom Sport proudly present the 2003 EmpirePoker.com World Pool Championships. It's a race to five. Here, live and exclusive on Sky Sports, you've joined us for the very best in nine ball action. Referee in charge of the action is Mr. Nigel Reese. Let's meet the players then. Now, ladies and gentlemen, two world champions will collide. Firstly, from the USA, he's the reigning and defending world pool champion. It's Earl the Pearl Strickland. And from Wales, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning world snooker champion, Mark Williams. It's a race to five, Rax. It can be terrifically rapid fire. Mark, Strickland, uh, Mark Williams bidding to upset Earl Strickland, who's already been upset, remember, once today. Another defeat here could be a real body blow for the defending World Pool champion. Can Mark Williams deliver it? Let's join our commentators, Jim Weich and Jerry Forsyth. Indeed, welcome to the Cardiff International Bill Strickland Arena. wins the lag. I'm Jerry Forsyth with Jim Weich, and what a cracker of a match we've got to start this championship off with today, Jim. Doesn't get any better. Two world champions from different Q Sport disciplines, and it's the Pearl all set to initiate things. A race to five. We're in the round robin stages here, day one. Well, as our viewers have been told, uh, this match is huge for Earl. He lost his first match, and you have to wonder if maybe these great champions, having seen the storm of the championship rounds last year, he might not have just forgotten to set his sails for the calm of these preliminaries. Well, Also very interesting as well to, uh, to everybody. I mean, they caught those pre-match interviews, and Earl putting no pressure whatsoever. He feels like he's struggling a bit. Mark Williams doesn't give himself uh, much of a chance. We all know how competitive Mark Williams is, so how dangerous is an animal when it comes out with nothing to lose? Yeah, that was a bit of pre-match bluster on both parts. Quite, quite a deal of psychology involved in this game. And not a very good shot from Strickland there. He's kind of halfway between the devil and the deep blue sea with that positional effort, so... A little tougher four ball than he would have liked. Down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see the balls that are left on the table. As the balls disappear from the table, they'll also disappear from the bottom of your screen. So it's very, very easy to keep up with the task ahead. Choice here for Earl now. He's got the angle, and he's drawn over the other side of the seven. You can see the eight, the opposite end of the table. So he's going to have to play position from that to the nine. And really doesn't look like any problems here, Jerry. This is going to be Strickland 1-0. No, you can believe Earl is going to put everything out now. He's, he dumped that match earlier. He's the current world champion. He wants to put in a good showing all the way through the week. See that at the bottom? You can just get it with your finger in it. Looks like he's asking for a ball to be cleaned, the eight ball. Yeah, this is where Earl has learned a little bit, even, I think, watching the snooker players. He takes a little more time. This is vital, this match, already having dropped the opener. He can't afford to lose this one. Everyone is playing in a group of eight. Earl Strickland has taken on his first beat. And now leads one to nothing. Big win, that one for Earl. He's got a hold serve. It's an alternating break format. So it's vital that these players come out. When it's their break, try and maintain that serve and hold pressure. Keep the pressure on your opponent. And Mark Williams is going to be asked to come up and respond to what he just saw Strickland do, a break and finish. Yeah, Jim, these boys are all playing in groups of eight, and they have to survive in the top half of that group to make it through Judgment Day on Tuesday. That's right, Jerry. Half of them go home, half go through to make up the last 64. Williams all set to break off. Needs one off the break. Three down, four down, and the five going down. And luckily, though, Mark is more concerned with where the one is finished. But what a break off from Mark Williams. Another look at it. Three balls off the break. 
And it's not like he put his whole soul into that break. That was not the hardest effort you've ever seen, but the control was gorgeous. That's what it's all about, the break off in nine ball. Control with power. You just want to keep that success rate high and get a ball off the break. Maintain your turn. Huge shot here. This can determine who gets control of this table, and Mark has lost control. Turned it over to uh, Earl Strickland, but Earl's going to come to the table, Jim, without much of a shot. That wasn't a bad effort from Mark. I think he knew that with the one going on to the seven, if he missed it, he wasn't going to be leaving Earl anything easy. At the same time, he wouldn't have left himself anything easy. Looks like he might be trying to draw that cue ball into the seven here. That's exactly what he tried, and he just missed the seven. Now, has he been lucky? That would be a great piece of luck if that one ball is indeed, as it appears, stuck behind the six ball. Well, you saw the little wry smile from Mark Williams there. It looks like he may be kicking at this off the side cushion. Never easy. Coming from a snooker table to a much smaller surface. What an effort from Mark Williams there. Couldn't have asked it to be any better. That a very friendly reaction of the balls. And Earl's going to come to the table with a toughie. He's going to have to pull out the jump cue or kick off of that left side rail. He may just be able to get over the edge of that two with his normal cue. It wouldn't surprise me to see him raise the back end. He doesn't really believe in the jump cue to Strickland. No, he doesn't. He believes that uh, it's kind of gimmicky. But here he is with his playing cue. And Earl is a great jump shot player. Oh, not this time. Well, this is the chance Mark Williams was looking for, and the good safety may have bought him the opportunity. Everything in the open here. You can see the missed attempt from Strickland. And he is a suffering man right now. We already said he dropped his opener. Never easy to come here and defend. Mark's done a great job of setting up the one ball for this next shot. This is critical. He's got to get down on that two ball in line with the position on the two that will carry him through to the six and then the eight. Boy, he's done a great job there. This guy's got a lot of control for a snooker player on a new table. Well, the most difficult aspect is coming from a snooker table to a pool table. You're so used to getting close to your work in a snooker situation. And Jerry, on a pool table, you're only ever going to be nine feet away. You don't have to be that close to your work. No, and you want a totally different uh, position play. No straight in shots. A nice open shot at the eight here and a good positional shot to the nine. There he is. He did not get the position he wanted on that nine ball. He's going to have to nip this ball. And, Jim, you can, you can appreciate the trouble that a snooker player might be having here. You played a lot of professional snooker. Like Quite an adjustment. Like comparing badminton and tennis. And Mark Williams squares things up in Cardiff now 1-1 in the race to five. Strickland will be breaking off in rack number three. But a good pot on this nine for Williams. Slightly out of position. And he's delighted to see those larger than normal pockets that he would be confronted with on a snooker table too, Jerry. Make no mistake about that. That was a tough little nip he just pulled in. I'm sure the size of the pocket was quite favorable to the young man. What a gifted player Mark Williams is. He makes a snooker table look like a pool table. And, you know, two world champions out there, Earl is not going to take him lightly at all. Mark can come out and say he's not very good at this game. Earl's not going to buy it. Three. You can't Earl's afford to take your break. opposition one lightly, one. not in a race to five. This is a sprint, even shorter than a sprint to what these guys are used to. But it's down to Strickland to reply. Almost made the nine off the break there. Very close to a golden break. Close but no cigar for Mr. Strickland. Here you take another look. Earl sends the cue ball crashing into the rack, and the nine ball heads right for the corner, as you can see. In the last minute, the two ball denies the opportunity for the nine to five find gravity. You know, Jerry, in all the years, as we see Earl now eyeing up the long two, 
of watching Earl break off, I thought, you know, if, the, if he does have a chink in his armor, and that was an open miss again, sure signs that Earl Strickland is struggling with his game. He's been on the practice table a lot, but you know something? The mental preparation, the self-belief may not be what it's been in the past. Well, there you see it again. And, and the problem, Jim, is these short races here don't give a man time to collect himself and get back in the game over time. He, can't, he doesn't have time to build confidence. He's got to inject confidence into himself and come back right now. On the job training is what this all boils down to. <laughs> Earl can get through to this too. That was a little bit of a mistake from Mark Williams, but how costly it's going to prove, only time will tell. Earl trying to hide the cue ball actually behind this wall of balls down here. He did not accomplish that task. And I believe that Mark, uh, I believe Mark's got a full shot here. You wouldn't expect Mark to miss anything in the open, but the cue ball control, that's going to be the key to success in nine ball. Yeah, but he's got a bit of a problem coming up. The nine ball is going to collide with his cue ball. He's got to be able to control that. Might be a bit hard with his lack of experience on this table. He's done that well. Shoot. That's beautiful. And the perfect angle to drop right over the other side of the table for the five. This is just the sort of start that Mark Williams was looking for. Keep Strickland in his chair, try and pinch one against the serve. That's so big because it's, it's much easier to protect a lead when you're alternating breaks than it is to come from behind. Nice angle on the sixth. Nice angle on the sixth to just drop on the seven above it. Well, he didn't come up short on that one. He's a very quick student. You see Nigel Reese having a real good look. He just wanted to make sure he wasn't feathering that nine with his shirt sleeve. And again, he's overrun position. A much more difficult ball than Mark would have been liked. Yeah, he's got to take a moment to throw that frustration out of him. Has to approach the shot with confidence. Got to know you can make them. There you go. You saw him stand up and he addressed that eight, Jerry. That's experience. That's composure. And he might not be giving away to too many players in this tournament in that department. A very happy crowd here in Cardiff. 2-1, their champion in front of Earl Strickland. Downtown Cardiff on a sunny Saturday afternoon. You'd never know it. No empty seats in the main forum here. Two reigning world champions, Earl Strickland in the world of nine ball and the man at the table, Mark Williams, in the world of professional snooker. And it's the man with the snooker background dictating the pace in this one. 2-1 in front, but he won't be happy with that break, Jerry. No, he's left an open table for Earl. I don't see any problems on this. Here's another look at the break off. You can see he tried the same snap that he tried last time that was so successful for him, and this time... Nothing, nothing went in a hole. So Earl Strickland comes to the table with a great shot on the one ball. Once again, the positional aspects for Strickland seem to be left out hanging in the wind somewhat. He can't quite get to this the way he would have liked. Makes position a little bit trickier. That was a good open pot. I'm telling you, he, he used the whole pocket for that shot. He's got to feel now like there might be a little bit of a leprechaun moving into his side of the table. Now back in ideal position, Jerry. A nice angle on this four. The five's the other side of the table, but everything in the open for Strickland. This is just what he wanted to see. And look at the position there again. That's under hit by... 8 to 12 inches at least. No, and he had to be so happy with the last shot, and then he comes up with this one. Um, inconsistency is an enemy of a champion in this game. 
He's in trouble here, Jim. He's got to make a, a little bit of a trick shot to get down on that seven without the nine ball jumping in his way. That's the problem, Jerry. For him to try and draw down to where he has to draw to, he's got to try and avoid that nine. He's got to clear it. Oh, and I don't think he so. hasn't. That was the problem with the poor positional shot that led to the five. He ended up digging himself a hole, and now he's got to come up with a little Strickland magic. Huge shot here. It looks like he thinks he can just clip the side of that seven. If he can, he'll be fine. He can send the cue ball to, uh, two to three rails and be all the way down table by the eight while the seven remains about where it is. But I'm surprised he can clip it. He may try and bank this straight up the table. And that's not a good shot. He is not hitting the ball with any conviction at all. And right now you're seeing a man surrounded by confusion in Earl Strickland. His form has deserted him. He hit that with half the power he needed to get that seven ball up on the rail, and he hit it in the wrong direction. And now Mark Williams has missed an open pot. In his defense, he was bridging over the nine ball. Huge let off for the Pearl, though, and he knows it. Uh, all Earl needs is a couple of good shots to get under his belt, to give him his confidence back. But he does have to get a couple of good shots in. Well, we this, really, this won't do it. And, Jerry, we really can't stress enough. In these short races, the pressure is intense. The players barely get a chance to settle into the match, and it can be over. Perfect position to the nine for Strickland. He's weathered the storm in this one. Back to two racks apiece in the race to five. More importantly, he's going to be breaking off in number five. Fortunate, though, that Mark Williams came to the table and missed that open seven. It could have been such a different storyline. And Earl knows that. He had to rely on his opponent making a mistake. That is not the way a champion wants to win. A champion wants to shoot his way into the winner's circle, not back his way in. Absolutely. And you can see even the look on Earl's face at 2-2. He's under pressure. And just have a look now. All the previous winners in years gone by. And they're all here to contest the event in 2003. Every one of them wants their name on that ticker tape a lot more than once. Earl Strickland does get to break off. He needs something good to happen here, Jim. I don't see it. I don't see anything good happening here for Earl. Now, it's important just to note where that nine is finished again, Jerry. That nine is moving on the break. It is indeed. Nine ball is moving over towards the corner pocket on every break shot. Now, fortunately for Earl, there's not a real handy combination on that nine ball until he gets to the eight, because the two would be a three ball combination. I don't think Mark wants to take that on. But Mark knows the lay of the land here and where that nine is. There are so many opportunities in the way of billiards, combinations. And this isn't the easiest safety in the world. In snooker, Distance usually equates to safety, not necessarily true in nine ball. Well, Mark wanted to put that one ball behind the pink four. He has <laughs> failed in that attempt. He hasn't left Earl much in the way of a shot unless Earl wants to take on a tremendously thin cut, and then he, he can't get back to the two ball, so that's not an option. Look for Earl to put Mark in jail here if he can. Well, he's got the three that he can use as a bumper again. And if he does play the nine, or sorry, the one into the three, the cue ball is going to take virtually the same path that it took for Mark. And it's just a question again, if he can leave it back in the same area, it's a question of whether he can keep that one in behind the pink four. Yeah, and you have to figure if Earl can initiate a safety war here, he's got to be favored in a safety war because he's so much more familiar with the physics of pool balls. Now he's got to get it in behind the four, and I'm not sure he's done it. Very close. Cue ball's almost nestled in behind the five as well. Well, Mark sure doesn't like the way it's looking for him. And Mark, a quick look just to see about banking that one up towards the nine. That would be fraught with danger. That's what he attempted. If he can get behind that ball. No, he has not. 
Took a flyer at the nine there, and I think his smile tells us that was a gamble. Could be a gamble that pays off if Earl happens to miss this open pot. No such luck, and what a great position play on the two ball from Strickland. Difficult to tell what angle he has on the two, but we know he's bridging right over the eight, and that's not going to make life any easier for Earl Strickland right now. Position to the three really holds the key. If he can bring the rear end of his cue stick up enough to send the cue ball out to stop when it hits the six ball, he'll have great shape on the three, but what a risk that's taking. If he gets behind that six. What a shot from Strickland there. Jack right up over that eight ball. That looked precarious even from the commentator's box. Tough, tough shot. Now Earl really has his work done. He, if he does, just doesn't relax too much, he should be able to clear this table. Well, the hard work anyway. I think you might see Earl looking at a 6-9 combination, Jerry. If he leaves himself an angle on the five to get back over the right-hand side of the table as we look, watch for that 6-9. He's having a quick look at it just to see where he wants to be. He's thinking three shots ahead now. Indeed, that's what he is studying, and it looks like he has settled on trying a combination on that six ball. Guaranteed now. As soon as he left the cue ball there, it's easy to get that white back the right-hand side of the table for the 6-9. And the other option, if he decides to race it around the angles, off the four cushions and play the six bottom right as we look. That's what he's done. He's going to go ahead and take this table out. One ball at a time. He's gotten, he'd like to have a little more angle here. He's going to have to punch this ball to get down table for the seven. I like that shot a little better. I'm a bit of a Strickland fan, I have to admit, and that showed a little bit more confidence, less desperation. Oh, I do like the choice of the run out for sure. Look at the way he spins that ball off a cushion. Nobody does it better. English has always been... Earl's strongest point. He spins the ball more than any other player that I can, I can name. Now, does this eight go? A feather contact on the eight would get the nine, but if the eight goes, that's surely the simpler way. Oh, he really had to play a shot there, Jim, to keep that nine in position. He knew the nine was going to be moved by the eight ball. And Earl Strickland now has a lead three to two in a race to five it's time for mark williams to dig down deep and try and come back on earl mistakes have been punished in this match a terrific one to open accounts here in this year's world nine ball championships but a couple open pots that normally you'd expect players to get and they have been so costly 3-2, the lead Earl Strickland currently enjoys, but Mark Williams will be welcomed to the table in rack number six. Here's some of our pool terms. English is side spin. Draw is known as bottom spin here in the UK. We call it a rail. You call it a cushion. Follow is top spin. Kick means to hit the cushion before you hit the object ball. And when you hook a man, it means you've snookered him behind an intervening ball. The two deposited off the break now. Rack number six of a possible nine. And Mark Williams is looking at a long, tricky one. What a tough shot to have to begin this rack with. He knows if he turns the table over, it could very quickly be four to two. What a great shot. This guy, is he, does he have nerves? But this is what you'd expect. Williams, a terrific long ball player on a 6 by 12 surface. Why would you expect him to miss something when he's only looking at 9 feet? Yeah, but what an opening shot that was. Yeah, but what an opening shot that was. What a reply Mark has come up with here. You know he's been putting in some time preparing for this. He's got a tremendous amount of pride. Here's where he's had some trouble in the past. He's come up long or short. This time he's got to bridge around the nine ball. It shouldn't give him too much trouble. 
Needs to be center table for this shot. Now be able to run that cue ball around the angles, back down for the eight. The crowd like it. Mark Williams is in such great form. Jim, this is going to bring us to a race to two between two world champions. We've got six racks in the books here in Cardiff, and there is nothing to choose from these two world champions. Mark Williams, three. Earl Strickland, three. There's action all over the arena here in Cardiff. The Whirlpool Championships upstairs. Nick Varner is losing to Holtz, four to one. And of course, Nick Varner is shown here on your screen as a former world champion. He's about to go down. He needs to win four games in a row to be able to pass on. Lots of other action upstairs as well, Jim. Paul Pottier is tied up one to one with Klonfar. Yeah, it's all happening here. We're going to try and keep you up to date with all the scores around the doors. But back to the main table here, Earl Strickland and Mark Williams, three apiece, deadlocked in the heat of action. Earl begging for a ball to go down on this break. Nothing has disappeared from the table. Mark Williams comes up to survey the scene. He's not going to like it a lot, Jim. There's a lot of trouble on this table. Yeah, you can't really attack from this. Well, he could bank this, sorry. That was the one option, but the three being tied up with the four, I thought if Mark was going to go for the bank, he might as well go full throttle at the table and open those up, and he didn't. So, again, it doesn't look like it's going to be a one-visit win for either player at this moment in time. No, this one should be a bit of a chess match. That three ball is, is the problem to solve. And then again, Jim, you've got the six and the seven lying kind of ugly. Well, Earl's fluke the five. Kind of a good news, bad news story. Jerry uh, got safe on the one. I think he'd have been happy to even see that five remain on the table. I'm sure he would have. He's got such a shot here just to make any kind of good go on the one ball. And if he makes it, which he wouldn't try for, he's broken out the three. That could be problems. Well, he tried to get that one over the right-hand side of the table as we look. But you can see Earl. He's very animated. You won't see him keep his emotions in check. He'll let you know no, exactly he... how he feels about the shot. Of course, he wanted. Excuse me. Here's some updates. Babicha has beaten Marku 5-3. to three. Of course, you know Strickland and Williams are tied here at 3. Pottier and Klamfar are tied at 1. Toshikawa and Manara, 2 up. Harriman beating Smith 4-3. to three. They still have a bit to go in that race. Hirosha, 3-1 to one over Roland. Varner now down 2-4 to four over Holtz. And Budo has beaten Kennedy 5-4, to four, while Horseball stands at 1-0 in his match with Chapman. Here's Earl. That sounded like a bad contact, Jerry. That even, and Earl put his hand up as soon as he contacted that one, but that didn't sound clean at all. Let's watch that one and see if either it or the cue ball bounce. There you saw the one, the cue ball bounce, the one bounce. Sure sign that you've had a bad contact. And Nothing's going good so far for Earl. When he broke out that three ball, he needed to be safe with the cue ball. He didn't get there. <laughs> It's all about containment now. Well, Mark hasn't done the best job in the world of containing Earl on this shot. Earl's got a lot to work with here. He's going to put Mark in jail if he can, but once again, he's failed on the safety. I think he more or less concerned himself just with the object ball there again, Jerry, but... He's allowing Mark a chance to really put the handcuffs on him. And that's just exactly what he's done. Yeah, you just can't give 
champions a chance, and uh, Mark's had too many chances so far in this no. inning. Earl is going to be kicking at this off the long cushion now. The only chance, and he's got to hit this. Well, he's going the near cushion. Much tougher hit. And But greater rewards. He knocks the one in, and look at the position on the two. What a turnaround there. Could boost your spirits when something you weren't attempting works for you. Just when Mark Williams thought it was safe to go back in the water. Well, right now he still has a, a problem on that six ball. He either has to play a six seven combination or move the cue ball all the way back down to this end of the table. Play the six in the corner far away. This is a big match for Earl Strickland. We talked about it earlier. He dropped his opening one five four. And he can ill afford to go 0-2 to open things up in defense of his world title. Jim, I'm not sure he's got the angle on this ball to get all the way down table to play the six in a pocket by itself. Earl's great at spinning the ball, but he's got to get to a rail to do that. Well, the only option, Jerry, and it's very risky, if he tries to draw back off this cushion and spin the cue ball back down in behind the six into this area but again that's very risky he's going to go for the combination now of course he's got to make not only the combination but he's got to develop that six ball into a shot after the combination he's not going to be happy with that effort at all Jim. He, he made the seven but he didn't develop the six Not ideally, but it's still there. And Jerry, you've already talked about how well Earl spins that cue ball. I wonder if he's going to try and knock this in and draw that cue ball off the side cushion and spin it. He's got to miss the side pocket. Or is he going around the nine? All the way around the nine. What a great shot from Earl. <laughs> a sign of a true world champion to be able to control that cue ball as beautifully as he just did. And more importantly, a sign of confidence. And confidence breeds courage. Earl Strickland, 4-3 in front right now. And he'll be breaking for the match in this one. Terrific positional shot from Earl Strickland. Weaving that cue ball around the cushions. Just watch this. Had to miss the nine, narrowly accomplishing that and taking that white right back up the table for the eight. Just the sort of shot that Earl Strickland was wishing would develop and again, you'd never know it from his expression. Yeah, but that's the kind of shot that'll chase the blues right away. Now you know you've got the power in your stick. You just come back to the table, play your game, win your match. Well, Mark comes to the table to break off to try and stave off elimination. I thought Strickland was breaking for the match, so this is still a chance for Mark Williams. He's got to try and force a one-rack decider and keep Strickland under pressure. The long one, position, not a formality. And that was the reason you see the one missed. He was thinking so much about getting that cue ball back down for the two. And has he left the one on? Well, it's barely on. You can see he misses the one ball. It comes off the nose of the pocket. And he's left Earl a really, really tough, tough shot here. It wouldn't surprise me to see Earl choose to duck here or to go for the bank shot in the side, Jim. That could be a two-way shot. No. I think he's got a glorious opportunity here now, Jerry. Everything in the open. Five onto the six. But he just wants to get that cue ball back into a similar area that it is right now. And now he's got the angle to take the cue ball right over the left-hand cushion and try and drop right in behind the five. 
That was a funny shot for me, Jerry. He had the perfect angle there. Again, just a little non-committal from Strickland. If he was going to play the 5-6 combination, he had ample room to overhit this. You have to wonder if it's not just the pressure seething through their sticks, because that's you're right, that's not at all the Earl that we know to come up with that position play. Now he's got to play the five onto the six and think about the cue ball as well. Has to clear the nine ball. I believe he succeeded very, very well. Nope. Pretty close. And it looks like he's got a little angle on this seven. That's what he needed. He needed to just slide by that seven ball, as you saw. Had to miss the seven to make a good shot. And now he's got angle to pull the cue ball over to the other side of the table for the eight ball and the clean finish. It hasn't been the most convincing of performances. Strickland's needed a few mistakes from Mark Williams. But it never ever says how, just who. And Earl Strickland survives a scare from the reigning world Stricker champion.